Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back to another video. This is Tracy coming to you from Atlanta. Yes, I just want to give you an update of my trip. Okay, I'm here um, at the hotel. I'm at the Embassy Suites. Okay, um, uh, my cousins get married tomorrow. We got family coming in from all over different parts of the state. Okay, different parts. Okay, and family that I haven't seen in like tons of years. Okay, some that, let me tell you guys something. Never let time pass you. Okay, never let situations come between you and your, and your family. Okay, just don't do it. Um, I was so happy to see some family members today and one was like, that I haven't talked to in years. And I said, wow, uh, look at my hair, y'all. What alcohol is it? To, I, I, I'm like, I hope it ain't the alcohol that got you, you know, connecting back with your girl. Okay, you guys, when I tell you that this is an emotional ride, it's an emotional ride. It is, you guys. Um, at first, I was... I'm, I'm going to be totally transparent and honest with you guys. I was really, really tripping off my side, my weight, my weight gain. But see, that's me. See, when people love you, when you're truly loved, okay, they don't, nobody's tripping off of, of, of your outside, okay? When you love yourself, okay? It's all about you and how you feel about yourself. Okay, seriously. You can't let nobody determine, okay, your self-worth. Okay, you have to love yourself. When I see my family today, there wasn't nobody tripping off, off of that. Okay? And you know, they even, there's a couple of them that didn't put on the phone. Okay, I was like, ah. So, yeah. I just wanted to give you an update. Let me, hold on for one second. Okay, I'm back, you guys. Never let anyone determine your self-worth, okay? You have to love yourself for you. Don't let anyone determine that for you. Okay, you guys, here are, I'm back. Here are the bridesmaids. Keisha, introduce your bridesmaids. Okay, so. We have. Cherie Carter. Cherie, I'm waiting for her to turn it around to show you. Uh, this is my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no problems with my channel. Okay, you guys, this is the um, bride. The bride to be. Tell them your name. It's Akisha. Hello. Hey guys! See, so you guys can get married too. Okay? You guys can fall in love too. Okay? There's somebody for everybody. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay, we'll be back in a minute, you guys. <laughs> Okay, there's somebody for everybody. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay, we'll be back in a minute, you guys. <laughs> okay, you guys, this is my cousin, Jarvis. This is, this is my wife, wife, Andrea. They live in Louisiana. Yeah. I always want to go to Louisiana. Yeah, come down here for Mardi Gras. You, it's, it's lit, it's fun, you're going to have a good time. Okay, let's do it. So, Tell me, how long have you guys been married? Two years. Two years, been together for 13. And they live in Louisiana. What do you do for a living? I bust tables. And what do you do for a living? I 
I'm a financial analyst. She said Tammy. Let's yeah. talk about that. Uh, uh oh. Let's talk about that. <laughs> talk, tell them what you do. I um, <laughs> I work for um, the historic New Orleans collection in, the, in New Orleans. We preserve the history of New Orleans, but I do the finances, which means that I just look at where the money is. Uh huh. That tell people where their money is and how much money they have. Let me ask you, as, as African Americans, how bad are we with money? I'm pretty good with money. But overall, I like to go deep. Uh -huh. How bad are we with money? With credit? Pretty bad. Yeah. We can do better. Let's just put we it that way. Better. We can do better. But there's always a way to fix it. Mm -hmm. Always fix your credit. Why do you think we can do better, Jarvis? Well, see, the thing that is, uh, white supremacy, they try to marginalize these blacks, and uh, they do a good job, and it doesn't help the fact that, you know, they put uh, uh, Popeyes and Church of Chicken and all that stuff that we like in, our, in the middle of our hoods, and then, you know, we don't benefit off of that because basically it's going to the other races instead of our own community, you know what I'm saying? And why do you think that? Well, how can I say, how can I say us as African Americans, we have a hard time practicing group economics. We have a hard time staying together. It's, it's because of uh, it's the old Willie Lynch syndrome of slavery. And everything. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I do. And let me tell you, you guys, what he's saying, he, everything he's saying, you can, you can do it. Okay. Uh -huh. They want to keep us in a, at a certain level. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you this. Um, do you think that a lot of people that are in your immediate circle are the ones that really bring you down, will tear you down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When they see a shine in you, when they see a, a potential in you, they want to always knock you down. They don't want to see you get higher than them. It's, it's a grass in a barrel type of mentality, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, I don't want to make an example, but uh, unfortunately, you know, the Nipsey Hussle situation down right. in Los Angeles. Let's talk about that. Yeah, um, everybody knows, you know, uh, they were both Rolling Sixties, members of the Rolling Sixties, Crips and Crenshaw and everything. And, you know, a, a, a fella, a brother like Nipsey Hussle, he was trying to do right for his community. He was trying to bring a positive light to Crenshaw, to the South Central Los Angeles. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, what happened, happened. Thing. But um, I think that us African Americans, we could come together, but our mentality. Why don't we? It's our under, mentality. It's, it's the slave mentality that's holding us back. And unfortunately, when you read the Willie Lynch letter, um, they said that if you do this certain tactic, it'll last. 400 years and beyond, and unfortunately, we're still in that same we're, we're, we're still in that same Yeah, position. it's still working. The system is still in place. And now, what we're having a problem with right now is not only just, you know, group economics, but the thing that's killing us back is gentrification. Hello. Yeah. I was telling you guys that in another video. New Orleans, New Orleans is... Maybe certain parts of, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Certain, certain parts are getting gentrified bad. Like, uh, she, she's from the Night War. Certain parts of the Night War, like, they build, you know, they, they say when they build a Starbucks, that's the, that's the, that's the, yeah. They want to keep us certain love. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they, they, they got to, they, they want to, they want to keep us poor because, you know, us as black people, we're, we're the original people, you know. Yeah. Africa is everything. All you minerals and resources come from that particular continent. Matter of fact, it's the only continent on planet Earth that is actually rooted to the ground. Every other continent just floats on water. That's why you got your gold, your diamonds, your rice, everything comes from there. It's called the motherland for a reason. Uh -huh. And um, also, metaphorically, you know, um, Africa is a continent that's center of the Earth, basically, just like a stomach, a woman's pregnant belly, just exactly. from Mother Earth, you know? Hey. He's been some real game to oh. you guys. I hope you are listening. Okay, because the new word today, the modern word for slavery is J O B. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Stick to you goals. 
Stick to your vision. Make sure you build credit. Credit is so, 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 so important. Like, if you don't make it to being a millionaire, a hundred thousand there, then hey, not a big deal. You can work uh, an average nine to five and build credit. Listen, I don't have a college degree or anything. I have a high school diploma, but I don't have a college degree or anything like that. You know, I don't make as much, but hey, I have good credit. Um, I do a good job on my finances. Every now and then I'll slip. It's like certain things happen in life, but uh, you can get a new car, you can get a house, you can get a, even if it's a small baby business loan to start off the bat to flip into something, you know, big. You understand? Look, I'm enjoying the world. Look, y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> what he's saying is. Uh, Pay your bills, keep your credit up, um, try to get it up to the 700 and beyond and everything. And, and just as, keep a, your bills as African Americans, I think it's really important. Yes. They don't teach us that. Yeah. No, they, they need to teach, teach that in school. That. They need to teach that in school. Oh, no. You know, they what, what else really? they need to teach in school? There, there's nothing wrong with college, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm, I'm a proud college dropout, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not one of those people that's going to downgrade college and tell you not to go just because it didn't work out for me because everybody's situation in life is subjective. You're keeping it 100. So This is what I'm talking about. What I think schools need to teach, not only just to go Real to college, but learn, yeah, learn, learn a yeah. trade or learn uh, financial literacy on building credit. You know, so that's that's one of the most time important things and stuff like that. Like my cousin right here, man, he's a, he's a tattoo artist and everything. Oh yeah, he gonna do it big. I hope you guys really got something out of this message today. I will be back with another family member. Probably see y'all at the wedding. You know, see you record. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, um, in New Orleans, they have um, racism down there, just like anywhere else in the South or anywhere else, period. But what makes New Orleans racism so unique is that it's done in an economic standpoint. For example, of course there's gentrification going on, but when you, um, the, the public schools in New Orleans where all the blacks are, is not in good condition infrastructure-wise. Now, when you go to a white area, you go to a damn white area, um, their, their public schools look like hospitals or urgent care facilities and stuff like that. They have um, over-the-top walkways to walk over the streets and stuff like that, like it's a hospital. We don't have nothing nowhere near that. They have football stadiums almost as big as college. Then, yeah, it's, is that serious? Is that serious? Um, what else? Yeah, it's, so basically, if you go to New Orleans... So there's a difference. It's the there's, obvious difference between... Mm -hmm. Between white, uh, black school and white school. Oh my God! Yes, night and day, night and day. Matter of fact, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty with it. When I when I started going to public school in New Orleans, everybody looked at me different because I had a proper accent. I was reading faster than everybody. Everybody else, not to not to talk down on those other people around me, but they um they was either illiterate or they read slow. So that's what ended up happening. So. Um, basically, when I moved to New Orleans, I was in the aftermath effects of segregation. So, um, I, I didn't live in the Jim Crow era, obviously, I'm 34 years old. But what I'm saying is I got the aftermath effects and the segregation effects that, you know, we didn't get in California. And California is, is, is everybody, is, is, is just a melting pot, period. You got, I have black friends, white friends, Asian friends, Middle Eastern friends, all back in California. When I came to New Orleans, majority of it was black. You know what I'm saying? And um, the private schools in New Orleans, of course, 99.9% .9 was, uh, was uh, white. And uh, it's probably about 2% of people, black people there. So yeah, it was just a major difference in New Orleans. Yeah, but that's all I can think of the top of my head. I'll, I'll come up with something. That's some good information, you guys. <laughs> we we still as a people we do you think we we're not reunited like we were supposed to be? We're, we're we're slowly 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 getting there, but we're we're still separated from just so much going and on. I, I don't like to talk politics. But no, go ahead, go ahead. Sometimes we need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this immigration thing that Trump is doing? I don't what know. is your personal? feelings about Trump and the immigration. Oh, uh, that, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of contradicting because... From a black man, 
What is your, how do you feel about the immigration? I find it funny because they, they talk about, you know, these immigrants are trying to steal our country when this was never their country to begin with. I'm talking about the, you know, the white supremacist stuff like that. They stole the land from, you know, Native Americans and blacks that were there before. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's hypocritical for the U.S. It's government to get down. Subject. It's just touching. Yeah. Yeah. Like I told you guys, it's touchy. It's a touchy subject. Okay, one thing he's saying is Trump, his delivery is off. Even if he's trying to make a good point, he's mm -hmm. not delivering it right. Mm -hmm. His delivery is off. Do mm -hmm. you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you agree with that? Yeah. Now, um, well, uh, one thing I want to say now about this reparations thing, I hope that we get reparations to African Americans. I think we deserve and it's owed to us. But the only problem is the reason why I don't see us getting reparations is because of what this country has been doing us for so long and still to this day. So the next phase of this white supremacy system is, is like I said before, gentrification. They're kicking all us black folks out of our neighborhoods. Gentrification, the way I look at that, I blame it on both black people and white people. I'm going to blame majority of it on white people first. The white people... White people are the root of the problem of gentrification. You see what I'm saying? The only fault I point the finger to us blacks is not taking responsibility but defending ourselves economically about it. That's how I look at it. Now, this is his personal views. Do not attack him in the comments. No, it's, it's cool, it's cool. I mean, it's Don't it, attack him it's, in the comments. It's, it's okay to disagree we're with having, It's okay to disagree with uh, 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 We're having a general conversation. This is his personal view. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's not stating anything against white or black. Yeah. This is his personal view, and he has a right to them. Yeah, I can see but, people like, man, get this big nose nigga out of here. <laughs> he, has a, he has a right to his view. Yeah, that's that's just my opinion. But if, if anybody it's disagrees, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Leave, I'm not going to argue. Leave it in the comment. He will be watching the video when it uploads. <laughs> he will answer you. Leave in the comments. If you agree, or if you disagree, let's have a conversation, you guys. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Okay, you guys, I'm back with the bride-to-be. Uh, I want her to give you guys some advice. She is going to school. Okay, she's raising her son. She's about to get married. Now, and she... Tell them, how hard is it for you to go to school? Oh my god. <laughs> hey Jarvis. Hey, what's up, what's up? Let him know this is a YouTube channel, so you have to give her your permission. Do you have permission to be on it? Hey, go ahead. I don't, okay. I don't care. And you, you <laughs> I don't, want, ca I don't care about the fame mind. like talking about it, but... Okay, get away. You gotta get back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, Dad. <laughs> okay, I'll go to school. I'll be a new, I mean... I'm going to grad school. I'm going to be a nurse practitioner. I work in the emergency room. Um, my struggles are I'm sleepy every day. I'm planning a wedding, which is tomorrow, so the planning will be over. And now I'm broke. Yeah, I'm married. They're married for two because years. Because a wedding is not cheap, so. No, it's not. I think it's my I'm broke it's married too. It's not. It's, it's very expensive, but uh, been married for two years. Been with my been with my wife for thirteen. But I know, still in my thunder. <laughs> but anyways, it's all worth it because my family's here, his family's here, and I'm so happy, my friends. But it is hard. Like I literally go to work three days a week, twelve hours in the emergency room. Then I go to school on the other day. And I have to go to clinical, so in clinical I have to see patients as if I'm the provider. And I have to prescribe things and diagnose things. Who was the Zilla, stuff. you or the, the green Zilla? I'm not a Zilla, ever. I'm mean naturally, so. Okay. Go get your husband. Go get Rodney. 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 Here's the groom. Here's the groom. 
Keisha, introduce it. Okay, hold on, because I know she's not going to want to be on I'm the groom. I'm Rodney, the groom. The groom, y'all. The groom. From Mississippi. M I T. Mississippi. In the house. M I T. No, here it goes. M I T. Trickler, 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 Okay, you guys, I'm back. Here's Jay Sheila. Hi, Jay Sheila. Hey, y'all. Okay, tell them about yourself. Okay, my name is Jay Sheila, and I'm a nurse at OBGYN. And I have a most amazing doctor in Oklahoma City. Look up the struggle. How long have you been doing um, the work you're doing? How long have you been doing that? What kind of things have you had to endure trying to get your career on the ground? Well, um, well what is the most difficult is that during the time that I was actually going to school, I was getting going through a divorce. And so I wanted to be a good I had an ex-husband. I had a good I didn't think that I was going to have to do much of anything for myself. But only one. We just were not building it. No, no, I don't. I have lots of reasons in my life, and at some point in time, before I'm 40, I might have a child, but I'm happy where I'm at right now. Um, I'm still trying to do it in my life. So, so, so is it okay? I mean, like, there's a lot of women out there that um, is in their 40s, and they have a career, they have a husband, but they don't have a child. And do you think that sometimes not having a child will you know make what? you feel less than a woman? No, I feel like each is own. You know what I mean? Some people really just don't want to. You know, I have people that I know that are like absolutely obsessed with being able to travel, being able to have marriages. And I even had a doctor that I went for that said that him and his wife would never have kids. They have dog babies, so their children are their dogs. And so in other words, you can still feel complete. Exactly. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't And so, did you follow your dream? Did you always want to be a nurse? Actually, when I was a child, I wanted to be a pediatric doctor. <laughs> That's what I wanted to be. Okay. But then I entered in, I'm a very big people person, so I entered into the field of like customer service. And did you get a lot of support? From your father, your mom, and your yeah, you know, of course. They were like, don't you? We're paying for your book. We're doing this. You can stay here forever. No, no, there's too many of us. Where there's, <laughs> tell me this. Where Have there ever been a time where you felt like giving up? Did you ever feel defeated? How did you get past feeling defeated? What did you do? What tool did you use? Well, my thing is, is that I have a lot of people. God placed me in every situation for a reason. Whether it was a learning experience that I understood at that time or I understood later. I understand that everything that I have going on in my life, God already has me. And I'm a very faithful person. So if you're not faithful to me, then that's fine. But I know who I am and I know where my goals are and what I have to do. And I don't want to be a person that just sits around and do nothing. Do you think that confidence plays a big role? And your success? Yes, because I'm a very confident person. I was taught to be that way. And key words, you guys, I said this before. Confidence is self-love and time. Yes. It's time. You don't like yourself you don't like yourself. It's like you set yourself up for failure by not loving you. And it's tough. People have to, you, your parents, your, your grandmother, your mother, your father, they have to teach you to love yourself. They have to tell you that you're wonderful, that you're great. And even if not, you look at yourself in that mirror every single day and you tell yourself that you love yourself and that you are somebody. And this is always a temporary situation. If the situation is hard, Make sure you let yourself know it's temporary. It is not something that is long lasting. Everybody has a 
an opportunity to do amazing. So never let yourself put yourself down. Because you're your own cheerleader. You're your best cheerleader. Sometimes you have to pat your own self on the back, right? Exactly, exactly. You're two men, not one. <laughs> right. So what she's saying is, whatever your dreams are, go for them. Love yourself, believe in yourself. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Amen. Keep your vision. Keep the vision. Yeah, keep the vision and stay on the path. There's a path that's out there for you. And when it feels right, keep going towards it. When it feels wrong, stay away from it. If you have, if you have negativity in your mind, take it out. When positivity is there, and people can be very negative in a positive way, but you have to understand how to breathe through it. Because when you're doing wrong, people are going to tell you about that. So don't take that as a negative. You know, just go ahead and keep going. And push forward with you got it. All right, tell them your name again. Again, my name is Jason Lebesh. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'll be back, okay, you guys? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> My little cousin Olanda. Now she got her master's degree. And how old are you? 25. 25 with a master's degree. And single. And single. Now, tell them how hard it's been for you to get your master's degree. What do they have to do? Like, you know, like, when, I, when you're going to school, you're going to have temptation if you die. Okay? You're going to have temptation. But you have to stay diligent to your dream. Yes. So tell them about your degree. Um, I have a degree in social work. And I currently, I just got a new job as a therapist. So... Yeah. She's going to be getting me some therapy tonight, y'all. Oh, she's going to be getting me some therapy tonight, Oh, okay. So, finish up. Let me give her her spotlight, y'all. So, tell them about your degree. Um, you know, so I'm just going to help people, help save the world, and that's that. What has been your hardest thing about going to school? Hi! <laughs> Everybody wants to be in. Everybody wants to be in a video. What's been your hardest thing about going to school? The reading and doing homework and study. It's all terrible. And are you paying for it yourself? Yeah, it's expensive. So save your money, kids, if you want to go to school. And do you have any kids? Not yet. Do you want any? Mm, maybe later. When so I what, is, what do you see, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, hopefully married. And, you know, hopefully I have a house by then. And hopefully, you know, just healthy. <laughs> That's my little cousin, you guys. I am so proud of her. Aww. You guys can do it, too. You can Tell do them it. they can do it, too. You can do it. And confidence. Don't it take confidence? It does. Lots what does it take? Would it give them five key points that they would need to succeed to and get it going to school and um, staying focused? Determination. You need to focus. Dedication, confidence, like you said, and just, you know, the will to do it. What about temptation? Like when they don't want to study, they want to go out and party and all that. I say go out and party and come back and do your work. Okay, so in other words, what she's saying is live your life. Live your life. But stay stay focused. Stay true to your dream, right? That's right yeah. Stay true to your dream, yeah, right? You got it. Isn't she beautiful? I'm going to come back to you guys in a minute, okay? Oh Tell them your name. No, Landa. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I am back. Today I have Retha. What, tell me who, what your name is, baby. My name's Aretha. Some, some used to call me Riri she, in my day. In a, Riri in her day. <laughs> she, now, let's talk about biological and non. She's not biological, okay? But she's a cousin. It's blood doesn't always matter, you guys. When you love someone, blood doesn't matter. Because you love from the heart, okay? You love from the heart. Okay, so Retha, I'm talking to Retha today. She's here in Atlanta for the wedding. Now, Retha, how many kids do you have? I have two sons. Okay, and so you were telling me earlier that you've been having some health problems. So how are you coping with that? A lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. A lot of love. A lot of support. 
and just keeping my head up high. So what? What is that? So what? So tell me about what type of health problems you have, and if you don't want to go, you don't have to go too deep. But tell the viewers because it might be someone out there going through what you're going through. How, we know. So tell the viewers. Tell the viewers. Tell the viewers. Hey, baby. Tell the. You guys stay tuned for a tag video. <laughs> so when you when you're going through stuff, Reese, and I know that you have a strong faith, mm -hmm. but for people that don't have that faith, and I, we want to encourage them to have some kind of higher power. But tell them about some of your daily struggles that you go through. Well, I went from being a perfectly healthy woman until 40 years. And after, what after 40, life changed. And tell us about that. It started out with a injury, neck injury, mm -hmm. that the pain was just so severe and being a person with a low tolerance, you know, drugs couldn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. I had to find natural ways to, to bear through it. Mm -hmm. And four years later, I fell out and had a seizure mm -hmm. at, at a church that I was visiting. So, you know, he placed me where he wanted me to be. You're next. Never had a seizure in my life. You come back. You come back, get you a drink. Back so let me back. ask you, um, how how is, has it damaged or impacted your marriage any with the health issues oh yeah definitely it definitely is. in what way in what way just um you kind of pull away you know you, you find yourself back in the corner and you don't know how you're going to come out are you saying you kind of lose yourself some in in within you, all that yes you, you lose yourself um you know you're pretty much going through something and you have no idea mm -hmm. you know what the outcome's going to be mm -hmm. you know how has it impacted your marriage? Well, there was some distance for a while. You know, I'm in the living room, he's in the room. It, it kind of pulls you apart because you're in two separate places, you know, mentally. But overall, he's been supportive in, in all of it. And, you know, it's, it's me with the withdrawal. But, but basically, it boils down to the love that you guys have for one another and the want of that relationship. You want to keep your marriage and, and all that. It, it comes from that, right? Right. It comes from love. Mm -hmm. And you have to want it, though. Right. You have to want your relationship to work, right? Right. So what did you do to get through that besides prayer? What can you tell the viewers? There might be people out there, Aretha, that don't have or don't believe in that higher power. Is there any advice that you can give anyone? That they can do maybe walk, exercise. I mean, what can yes. read? What what can you tell them that they can do? Well, how I learned to, to just calm is meditate. You know, I, I had a, my sister in law. She would tell me, "Girl, meditate." And I would look at her like, "Meditate? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do that? She, get you some candles." And I tried it, and I went back and said, "Um, they ain't do nothing to me." Uh huh. You know, but when. I've reached out to some classes, um, groups, resources, Gr groups like me. Um, uh -huh. You know, people. I was hearing them say the same words, um, like torture. Uh -huh. You know, when they spoke of pain. Um, uh -huh. You know, I've been in pain for 25 years. And wow. To hear somebody else's story, it was so encouraging, and to, just to know that counseling is okay. I said that before in the mm -hmm. video. Counseling yeah. is okay. Yeah. So. Can you give somebody, can you tell somebody how they can meditate? Like, should they close their eyes? Should they, you know, let's, let's, let's tell someone. What if someone doesn't know anything about meditation? Can you give them steps on how they can how they can do that? Well, it's, it's, it's what really suits you for me. You know, I've downloaded some some meditation apps from YouTube. Just from YouTube. I like to hear the oceans, the wave. I like the little walkthrough where they, they help you to breathe. You know, you'll be surprised at how much breath air mm -hmm. you know will make mm -hmm. you feel i mean excuse me viewers but when i really learned how to do it mm -hmm. i was like Ooh, mm -hmm. that, that's like that was good like an orgasm yeah, yeah. i wanted some more you, hello <laughs> hello you feel me yes that and so, it, it made you yes, feel good head. inside yeah that inner peace inner peace basically what she's saying is yeah. that inner peace made her feel so damn good Real good. <laughs> so good. You guys, we have to focus and find what works for us. We have to find that inner peace. 
We have to find it, you guys. Right, Rita? We gotta find it. Cause we find you. How many lives do we have, Rita? You only get one. Live your best life. Live your best life. Because what? We don't know when our life is ending, right? Yeah, we can't go back and get another no. one. So when you're going through something, if it's meditation, if it's praying, whatever it is, we have to dig deep inside of ourselves and find that inner peace that can help us get to that next level. You can do it, you guys. You can. It's not easy. Tell them. No, it's not. But you know what I always told my sons, and they're 27, 29 now, and I tell them, you know, it doesn't matter how you fall. It's how you get back up. Woo! Let's you know, talk so about that. One day at a time. That's all we can do, one day at a time. You might have some bruises and scratches, okay, when you fall. But who sung that song? I always come to you guys with a song. <laughs> we fall down, but we get up. But we get up. <laughs> Sing it. I'm going to let you keep the focus. We fall down, <laughs> but we get, get up. up. <laughs> Got to get up. We can't stay in that space. We cannot stay in that space. We have to get back up. Yeah, depression is real. You know, and you have to admit it to yourself. Depression is real. You know, even after health, dealing with health, you know, losing a brother. I've had a brother for 44 years. Well, what happened and with that, Risa? Health. You know, health is so important. You how know, are you, how are you coping with the, with that loss? Well, at one point I wasn't coping. You know, the day after his service is when I realized how real depression was. I didn't get off my couch for seven days, seven nights. I stayed in that same place. I, I couldn't get up. It was like it, it was something that hurt me to my soul. Oh. And, and I'm a believer. But because of him, I got back up. And what you do to cope, you think about your good memories of your brother, right? But every day, people say, oh, you get over it. No, you no, don't. You'll never get over it. Don't let nobody tell you that. You have to learn to live with it. Don't let nobody tell you that. Mm -hmm. You have to readjust your life and relive a whole new life without that person. Right? right? But it's not easy. No, it's not easy. We never forget. We yeah. never forget that person. Yeah. Grief is, is, is a serious thing. Going through grief. And every single day, you might have a smile on your face. Behind that smile is pain. I call it it's sorrow. It's sorrow and pain. Yeah. But you're coping and you're getting through it. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting through it. I mean, I was blessed with not just family, but with, with just love friends that will just hold your hand and walk through it all with you. They're not friends. Um, we call each other family. Like you said, you don't have to have the same blood to be family. We're going to end this, this conversation, but before we do, what kind of advice can you give to someone that is going through grief? To never give up. Um, it would be, I can't help you by saying I'm sorry for your loss, because it, it would be a waste, because you'll never get over it. But you have to find your ways to learn to live with it, because I'll, I'll never forget it. Even though we look just alike, and... I was searching for him, and one day I said, you know what, Rita, look in the mirror. And I saw him, because he's my twin. So you just got to pull from those things, and I'm not saying it's easy. You're going to have those days, but however you got to get through it, do it your way. No one can tell you how to process the loss of someone that, you, that was near and dear to you, that you love. And don't let nobody tell you how to do it. When your timing is up and, and you get better, that's when you get better. But keep it close to your heart wherever you go. We're going to end that video, this, this conversation on that. I want you guys, I want you guys to understand that we love you. I love you. Okay? I really hope you got something out of this conversation. I want you guys to know God loves you, the universe loves you, whatever it is you believe in, most often believe in yourself, okay?
Believe in yourself. When you fall, find, dig deep inside you and find all the strength you can to pull yourself up. Don't just wall water in it. Don't just lay down. Don't go out like that, like no sucker. Get up. You feel me? <laughs> right, Rita? Right. See you in a minute, you guys. My little cousin Olivia. Now she got her master's degree. And how old are you? Twenty-five. Twenty-five with a master's degree. And single. And single. Now tell them how hard it's been for you to get your master's degree. What do they have to do? Like, you know, like when, I, when you're going to school. You're going to have temptation if you die. Okay? You're going to have temptation. But you have to stay diligent right. to your right. dream. Yes. <laughs> so tell them about your degree. Um, I have a degree in social work. And I currently, I just got a new job as a therapist. So, um, Look, yeah. She's going to be getting me some therapy to <laughs> work uh, Oh, she did my video on my YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So finish your, yeah, let me give her her spotlight. <laughs> so tell them about your degree. Um, you know, so I'm just going to help people, help save the world, and that's that. What has been your hardest thing about going to school? Hi! <laughs> Everybody wants to be in. Everybody wants to be in a video. What's been your hardest thing about going to school? The reading and doing homework and study. It's all terrible. And are you paying for it yourself? Yeah, it's expensive. So save your money, kids, if you want to go to school. And do you have any kids? Not yet. Do you want any? Mm, maybe later. So what do, you, what do you see, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, hopefully married. And, you know, hopefully I have a house by then. And hopefully, you know, just healthy. <laughs> That's my little cousin, you guys. I am so proud of her. Aww. You guys can do it too. You can Tell do them it. They can do it you too. Can do it. And confidence. Don't it take confidence? It does. Lots what does it take? Would it give them five key points that they would need to to see and get it going to school and um, staying focused? Determination. You need to focus. Dedication. Confidence, like you said, and just you know the will to do it. What about temptation? Like when they don't want to study, they want to go out and party and all that. I say go out and party and come back and do your work. Okay, so in other words, what she's saying is live your life. Live your life. But stay stay focused. Stay true to your dream, right? That's right yeah. Stay true to your dream, yeah, you right? Got it. Isn't she beautiful? I'm going to come back to you guys in a minute, okay? Tell them your name. No, Landa. We got, we got a bunch of